So welcome today to another edition of Business Spotlight interview series. And today I'd like to introduce Nathan Chrisfield from Peak Shape Australia. So welcome, Nathan. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, our pleasure. So um, maybe if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about what Peak Shape Australia is all about and what you do. Uh, well, essentially, Peak Shapes are... Uh... Uh, method and and our, uh, our our business model is to deliver transformations not just workouts um, so we're a gym that really focuses on all the aspects of a fitness journey and a fitness transformation yes um, and we sort of try and bring all three elements the really key elements together um, in a very different manner so obviously the fitness coaching side of things um, you know, delivering workouts and the best workouts possible to try and sculpt and, you know, and, and enhance the metabolic process of training. Yep. Uh, nutrition coaching added in on top or it can be as a standalone thing. Um, and we put a lot of work into customising the, the nutrition element. Right. Um, and trying to work with uh, allied health professionals in that sort of aspect as far as blood screening, um, working with nutritionists if it falls outside our scope um, mm -hmm. uh, primarily that sort of happens with women that are in that menopause area era sort of 40 plus they need sort of very specialized nutrition stuff quite often and they need a bit of blood work done so we can get a bit of a bit of a base of where they're at hormonally so we can actually give them the best nutrition fantastic um, and then we've got a life coaching model that we've um, recently brought in the last six months um, that is specifically sort of targeted straight at a, at a life coaching and mindset side of things. And it doesn't have to be fitness based. Some people come in and they're just struggling with what they want to do with life, which makes it pretty hard for them to focus on the right, you know, the right path for fitness. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we get all three of those parts and we add them all together and put them in the right spot to get, the, get people the best result and, the, and a sustainable result. It's all built on sustainability, making it worth long term. Yeah, okay. Now, that, that sounds uh, fantastic. And how long have you been in business for then, Nathan? Uh, well, I've been in business uh, since I was 21. Um, and I've been in this business for about three, maybe four years. Right. Okay. And from a geographic point of view, uh, where are you based and, and then what sort of uh, geographic area do you cover? All right, so the studio in Aubrey is based in uh, just at the top of Dean Street, corner of Dean Street and Young Street. Okay. Um, right above Q Property Real Estate. Yep. Um, and our geographical location for that, that spreads all across Aubrey Wodonga. We've got clients that are as far as Baron Duda that drive to do classes. Yep. Uh, and yep. then we've got, um, so we've got some online clients as well that are based, ones in New Zealand, ones in Coriolan, uh, tour in Coriolan, actually, sorry. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've got an online model as well that caters for people who are not specifically around the Aubrey Wodonga region. Yeah, that's right. And we've got a digital model that can be spread, you know, nationwide or globally if need be. That's going to be launched in February. Yeah. Okay. And um, I know you've already sort of touched on this, but um, who would make an ideal client or a customer for for your business? Uh, so our main clientele that we really look to, to service are women 35 and above mm -hmm. um, that are either pre or postnatal um, and need a really good base to either start looking at wanting to have a child or have just had a child and want to uh, rebuild um, the base that they had prior to the, to the um, pregnancy process. Yes. Um, because after the pregnancy process, things really change inside their body and needs extra support to really get them back to where they would like to be. Um, um, yeah. And then males, males in about that same bracket, 35 and above, where um, I'm doing a bit of a dad focus thing at the moment. Um, and it's just same same issues these guys are tackling, but just with a different, they just need a different, different process to get them to where they want to go. Yeah, okay. And... So what have been some of the biggest issues that you've had to overcome in terms of that journey into the business? Um, the business itself or me? Oh, well, uh, either or. Uh, look, overall, um, the business has always probably performed quite well. Um, mm -hmm. 
probably the issue that we're probably tackling at the moment is um, the the whole issue around that everyone's tackling where living expenses are starting to really hit people's pocket um, and their ability to you know focus on the things that are that they need you know and fitness is one of those things that can be it's probably a luxury item yeah uh, so to sort of tackle that of why digital was such a probably important pivot and as it comes into the, it comes at a lower cost base doesn't obviously get the hands-on hands-on experience the studio offers but then we also i've also made a, a lower price membership that helps people get in still helps helps them tick that box a couple of times a week um yeah because we are at the higher end of the fitness model because we are a pretty hands-on um, sort of focus. So we created a cheaper, a cheaper membership often to help people still get in the door. And then, you know, this you know, inflation and living expenses aren't going to stay this way forever. There'll be a time when we do get a bit of pressure relief. So when that time comes, people will go ready to step, step it up and, and spend some more time on, spend some more time and money on their fitness journey. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, what whilst it might be perceived that uh, fitness might be a discretionary expense, yeah. the reality is that, you know, if, if you really want to be functioning at, at peak performance all the time, um, then health, health and fitness needs to be part of that consideration. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely times when you can scale back. I mean, I'm a, I'm a single dad. I'm... A business owner. I also have a weekend job, um, mm -hmm. um, and I was running another business up until up until October. So I was doing two businesses at once. So I definitely like understand the ability to not be able to give it a hundred percent. Yep. Um, but it's not an excuse to just throw the bag in. All right. It's not it's because it, you know in three or four months' time, when you know the life pressure is not going to get any easier, and exercise really does help you cope with those extra life pressures. Um, yes. And that's all. That's what we understand. The, the, the issue has been that we've got to change our business model to try and suit try and suit people and still give them the help they need, and then we'll be ready to go when they're ready to go as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And Nathan, in terms of uh, inspiration, how do you find your inspiration to keep you focused each day? Um, it's very much. Uh, it's intrinsically driven in me, I suppose. Um, I've got a pretty interesting backstory in life that uh, involves a pretty like pretty low rock bottom at one point. Mm -hmm. um, so my desire to uh, you know succeed in business and succeed in life is very deep rooted in me. Yes, um, and it's just, it's something I draw on to to help help clients because um, it hasn't always been easy for me. I've had to do my own body transformation. I've had to do my own life transformation leading into being able to coach people. So yes. um, yep. I've, got a, I've got a toolkit that I picked up that I use for clients and I also use them myself to, you know, because when it's running a business it can be hard at times. So you've got to be able to draw back on what it is you're doing it for and why you're doing it so you can keep yourself going. Uh, look, I couldn't agree more there is, you know, it can be very lonely in business and, you know, what's really important is understanding your why, yeah, yeah. why why do you do what you do and uh, who, who who is it that you're actually aiming to serve um, in terms of your customers and clients. So what's been the, the greatest learning that you've had about yourself in this journey? Oh, um, that's... When when needed, um, I've actually got a I've got a great mind for operations, and I've got a great mind strategically, which is it's actually a skill set I picked up. You know, when I was younger, probably when I was doing my apprenticeship, I moved moved into an operational capacity pretty early in my apprenticeship. Yep. Um, now that I've uh, now that we've moved to a bigger scale of business from peak from a peak shape point of view, and also selling my own small business back in October. Um, is that I've got a great mind for that strategic process and that operational stuff that's really important in any business. Um, yep. You know, mark marketing is only half half the battle. You can market a business as well as you like, um, but if you don't have any meat and operational and, and products behind that, what are you what are you even marketing? It, exactly, and you know, I, I guess as a as a small business owner, that's one of the things that we all have to do is to wear different hats for different. Uh, aspects of the business how do you actually cope with that uh, well um the stress of it uh 
But to be honest, the, the coping mechanism while I have is probably working at a different job on a weekend. So I drive trucks in the state on a weekend. Okay. Um, and it sort of takes me from being having to be um, the small business owner and lets me just work for somebody for a couple of days. And with obviously the driving trucks long distance, I get a lot of clear time to just think where I can be outside the box, I guess, because it's important to be in the box but be able to step outside the box and look at things from an external view. Yes, yep. Um, and it gives me the ability to do that. Um, yes, I'm essentially just back to being an employee when I'm doing that job and I get to look, look just look at things from the outside view. And that's, a, that's an important tool. I use that every fortnight. I go away and just work. Obviously, it helps with cash flow. Yep. Um, and this gives me the ability to, to look at what I'm doing from the outside view so that I'm not just... Because if I was at home every weekend, there's no doubt that I would just find something to do on the business. I wouldn't just use it for recreational use. But I, <laughs> Uh, look at you know. I, I think that's one of the biggest traps that uh, that we can fall into, and, oh. and I see it maybe not necessarily as being a good habit, but but actually being a bad habit is yeah. when you focus all your time, energy, and attention to the business. It's important to be able to have that out time um, to think about and do things other than just focusing on the business. And yeah, yeah, We're working on it instead of working in it is a really key thing that I've, I've learned um, through yeah. experience and then through other people that I follow and listen to. It's a really key thing they always say is important to work on it as well as work in it. Uh, absolutely. So um, in terms then of um, if you were to start the business again, what would you do differently next time? Uh, if we were to start, because uh, there's two of us in peak shape, there's me and my, my best friend who lives in Brisbane is my business partner. Yep. Um, if I, if we were to do it again, um, we would um, strategize the business differently so that the next decision we're making was thought about, you know, three to six months ahead of when we're making it. Um, mm -hmm. We fell into a trap of making decisions as a problem arose and we had no structure around what we were doing. So the next potentially a couple of those were bad decisions. So we sort of reaped the, um, the, the, the cost of making a bad decision six months uh, after we made it. Mm -hmm. So then when you make a good decision, you've got another six months of hard work and toiling before you see the benefit of that good decision. So that's probably the, our biggest learning in, this, in the last couple of years. Yeah, so it, it's about really thinking through and doing that strategic planning ahead yeah. of time. Yeah, absolutely. Know what your next decision is six to 12 months ahead of time so that you've got the framework around it and you've already, when you pull that lever, you're already going to know what the pros and cons are. Yes. Yep. No, great, great, great advice, Nathan. Um, one final question. What does the future look like for your industry? <laughs> um, I think that the industry will, it, it goes through shifts from what I can see. Um I think that if you talk about peak shape specifically in that in in our industry, um, we've um, highlighted the need for a fitness model that a covers all the aspects that we cover, yep. but also has a pro has a has a fitness and a transformation system and a health journey system that will be ready to cater to people that are 35, 40 plus. Um, because they're coming into that te technological area where this era where they're starting to understand technology better. Mm -hmm. so those people that don't like tech now, they're starting to get a, their hands on it. So in you know, you know, two to five years' time, they're going to be ready for a fitness model that can be delivered virtually. Yes. Yep. Um, and there's a bracket of people right now that are in that 25 to 30 year range who are about to start having kids. They're probably going to start working a little more because <laughs> life's changed for them. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to fall into the pressures that we all fell into and for the clientele we have now that are in that higher age bracket. So we're just really focused on having the best system possible so that when those ready people are ready for a system like ours, we've got it there ready for them to use. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Um, okay, any last bits of advice that you'd like to, to offer anybody that may be watching this video? Um. The, it probably really falls into that operational aspect of, of what I do um, would be the first bit of advice, you know, really plan stuff. Even my other business that I just sold out of, that was all just done off a whim. There was no real planning, not, not until the last two years when I decided I wanted to sell it, that I didn't plan for anything. Right. Um, 
plan and, and, and get advice from people that you um, aspire to be like. So, I mean, I, I have many mentors. Some of them are people I know. Some of them are people I just follow. Mm-hmm. Really listen to everything they say and take the bits out that resonate with you um, and then do your own research around that. Um, there's more than enough research around, you know, deeper about starting a business and um, why, it's, why you want to do it is important research that sort of stuff so you understand why you're doing it because it's not all fun and games it's not always nice it can be ugly yep but be prepared for the ugly parts as well as the really good parts look i think that that's fantastic advice nathan and yeah one, one of the things that that we really encourage business owners to do is is uh, probably before the planning stage is do the learning stage yeah absolutely. you know once you've set your goals what's the learning that you actually need to undertake so that you can put your best foot forward as you're stepping into that planning stage um, yeah so um, I, i'd recommend looking up strategic cascading um and reverse engineering so that you've got your goal in mind and then it will teach you how that process will teach you how to reverse engineer Yes. Yep. You need the things you need to learn to be able to execute the main the main goal. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you for your time today, Nathan. Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, look forward to following you on your journey. No worries. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for your time. Okay.